Today I'm going to talk about how to use the Layer 7 API portals API Explorer. Now this is key for letting your developers interactively explore backend APIs to understand how they work. Any API that you publish that has a model attached to it is automatically pre-populated here and makes it available for your developers to play with. Uh, for example, here is Bing.com, Microsoft Search Service. Uh, it has a Waddle file that's associated with it that's publicly available. Uh, we've included it here so you can see what the resource looks like. It's just a call against their API. They have a method called search and they have a number of parameters that are required that we've already pre-populated based on that Waddle file. Uh, they call their app ID is really their API key and that's already pre-populated for you as well. Uh, if there were other parameters you could go ahead and add them here. Just name them and give them a value and submit them and away you go. In this case, we've got a search going on here. I'll just go ahead and execute that. We'll expect a JSON response. And here's what comes back. So I can see we've got a JSON response based on our uh, search term that we submitted. We've got some interesting um, results back. I can also look at the query to find out what that looked like. Here's that get call to the back end specifying JSON. Uh, the query term, the source that we we're looking at, just a web, and then we've appended that API ID or the API key right there. Similarly, we can go ahead and change some of these values. Let's choose news and let's go ahead and make this an XML call. If I go ahead and execute that request, I'm given this time an XML response, a big chunk of XML and my query has changed a little bit because this time instead of sources equals web we've got sources equals news so you can understand how to interactively play with this how to format those queries and what kind of responses you might want to get back but i've also got a number of other services on here let's have a look at the echo service so echo services like a hello world service we're just going to submit a string we're going to get it come back to us like a hello world and we'll go with a get method so here we have our basic request. We'll just put in a test. And if I go ahead and try and execute this, I'm told that authentication is required. So we have the ability in the API Explorer to layer on authentication. The authentication call is being specified down here in my policy manager. So here's my API proxies policy manager. It allows me to layer on many different things in front of my service. In this case, our service is just a template response that's going to echo back whatever string I put in. But here is the require HTTP basic credentials. And that comes from our palette of access control assertions. The one that we're using right now, require HTTP basic, is here. But I can go against any identity provider. In fact, we provide you the capability to define identity providers. In this case, we provide out-of-the-box support for most of the popular ones. Uh, you can also specify just generic LDAP and build your own if you've got a custom LDAP that you're using within your organization. Other ones we can use are calling out to a database, uh, querying a predefined LDAP, or even SAML tokens. So a lot of different options for access control around your endpoint. In this case, I know I need HTTP Basic, so let's just go back to our API Explorer. I'll click on the Authentication button, and I'll choose HTTP Basic. I'll give it a value, and click OK. Now when I execute, I get the back end, and I've got a hello world. My hello test comes back at me here. So a very simple way of layering on Basic. But I've got some other things in here as well. A little more complex like the Acme Warehouse API. In this case I've got a number of different resources. Uh, I've even got a place order so I could do a put. Uh, let's just go ahead and use something simple like list products here which will just give me a list of all the products currently available in the Acme Warehouse. Now if I go ahead and try and submit this request using those basic credentials I find out that I have an invalid API key. So I'm going to go back again to our API proxy and we'll choose the Acme Warehouse service this time. And you can see I've got some policy logic that's layered in front of my route to this back end, which is my Acme Warehouse service. I'll just go ahead and expand these and you can see there's quite a bit of complex policy. What we're doing here is we're looking up that API key, making sure it's valid 
And then what we're also doing is we're checking the API plan as well. So API plans are associated with rate limits, so we're making sure that currently you're not over your rate limit. If you've got 100 hits per day, we're checking to make sure you haven't violated that. If you have, what we're going to do is send back an API plan limit exceeded message so you can create as many notifications as you need uh, in appropriate situations to send those back to developers to let them know what's happening on the back end. So that's our policy in place, doing an API key check. Let's see how that works using the API Explorer. So I can click on authentication, choose the API key, I'll give it a name, just call it the API key, and I've already got a value here that I know is valid, so I'll go ahead and just enter that. And I'll click OK. Now when I click the execute response, there you go, it tells me that my not only was my API key uh, correct, but I also get back a number of product IDs and product names associated with uh, what I was searching for in the Acme warehouse. So that's API key check. But like I said, we have quite a few options for you. In fact, let's look at one. I'm just going to go ahead and disable that API key check and show you another thing that comes with the API portal. And that's the OAuth toolkit. So OAuth Toolkit comes pre-installed on the API proxy and allows you very simply to layer on either OAuth 1 or OAuth 2 authentication if that's the way you want to go. In this case, what I've done here is I've specified my endpoints to just use the API proxy. Just for demo purposes, I'm going to use the API proxy as my authorization server, as my um, resource server, as my token server as well. But you can configure that very easily to point at your own resources within your own organization. Now once I've got that set up, all I need to do is include what we call is a policy fragment. I'll require an OAuth 1.0 token. Again, this policy is provided for you out of the box. It's a fairly complex policy. It takes some time to get used to. But we provide this out of the box and it will call your parameters, your configuration, if you're using a different um, authorization server, for example, or a different resource server, uh, that will all be included and picked up from your configuration points. So all you really need to do is just drag and drop this in front of your API. I'll save and activate that. And now we've got an OAuth 1.0 check. I'll go back to our API Explorer. This time I won't use the API key. I'll just go ahead and choose OAuth 1.0. I've already got everything pre-populated here for demo purposes. I've got my client key, my secret, my request authorization and access URL already pre-populated. I'll just go ahead and click OK. What's going to happen is I get popped up uh, the need to do that OAuth handshake whereby I have to log in to my resource server. I'll go ahead and do that right now. And then I have to grant the API Explorer to access my resource on behalf of myself. So I'll go ahead and push the grant button. Now when I click the execute, you can see the date stamp change there, but I've got again back into my list products and I can look at what's available currently in the in the uh, Acme warehouse. So now let's go ahead and change it up once more. I'll just disable that 1.0 and we'll add in the 2.0 token. I'll bring that to the top save and activate it, come back over here and I'll just choose again that Acme Warehouse list products and this time instead of OAuth 1.0 I'll go for OAuth 2.0 again I've already pre-populated these fields I'm going to go ahead and use client credentials my client ID is here, my key secret is here and my token endpoint is here now when I go ahead and click OK execute that request I come back with that list of products. So very simple way to layer on different authentication methods using the API proxy and then test those out using your API Explorer. It gives your developers a opportunity to interactively learn what's happening behind the scenes and how to play with your API.